I'm Jamie Turner. I'm Professor of Engines and Energy Systems at the University of Bath in the Institute of Advanced Automotive Propulsion Systems. I do a lot of research on alternative engine concepts, a lot of research on alternative fuels, and linked very much to that, I do work on decarbonisation of liquid fuels. The sensible thing, as far as I'm concerned, is to pursue all the available options that we have, and that has to include the internal combustion engine. The internal combustion engine is a remarkable piece of equipment, really. It's enabled the modern world in many respects. We've been building it for 120 years now. It's affordable because it's made from cheap processes and it has a cheap energy storage system. We really need to look at things in terms of well to wheels. Above that, we need to move to what's called life cycle analysis because at that point you bring in the difficulty of getting hold of all of the raw materials and the processes involved with making a car. At the moment, the manufacturers are responsible for the tank to wheel and the fuel companies are really responsible for the well to tank part. The legislation raised on the car manufacturers is actually very, very severe year on year. We've got to get down to 95 grams of CO2 per kilometre and that's going to be incredibly difficult using current technology unless we develop new combustion processes. Downsizing is a very good way of getting fuel consumption, but essentially it really brings you benefits on a drive cycle which is very light. On less easy drive cycles, it's not such a benefit. There's definite argument for having a slightly bigger engine. And in that respect, there is this phrase right sizing that is now used, something that is the right size for what we need. Definitely that has come towards Mazda. HCCI, type combustion systems, they don't burn with a flame. If you just get something and squash it enough, it will ignite. The compression heat initiates combustion. So if you don't have a flame, you don't have the very high temperatures locally to create NOx. So the real attraction of these combustion systems that really got people to work on them is twofold. Good fuel consumption, because you're running very lean, and secondly, the promise of negligible NOx output from the engines. So we've all known that that would be the panacea if you could do it. It's been spectacularly difficult in a four-stroke engine. People have looked at different things and the Mazda system uses mainly a charge in the engine which is very, very lean, prepared with an early direct injection event. And then towards the end of compression, they inject some more fuel very close to when they want to ignite it, so it's very close to the spark plug. They pass the spark, that ball of ignitable mixture burns and it expands. When it expands, it compresses the rest of the charge, which then goes off in a compression ignition process. Mazda, with a SP CCI system, seem to have made a breakthrough. And they've done that by really combining elements of spark ignition with elements of compression ignition. Of course, that's the theory. I think we can safely say that if we could have done it before now, we would have done it before now. And that's why it's important that someone's been first. And for me, as a researcher, having worked in this area for 15 years, it's going to be very interesting to drive this car and see what it's actually like on the road. We really are going to need a portfolio approach in the future. There's no doubt that the internal combustion engine will continue to play a very major role for most manufacturers. Electric vehicles are great in terms of no CO2 emissions at point of use, but nevertheless, we have to make new technologies that run on fuels which are in the market now. And that's why this particular combustion system is potentially very important. But we do need to keep improving them so that we can reduce the emissions from road transport and hopefully mitigate climate change. When you drive it, I'm very impressed with the way it starts and it seems to want to go into SPCCI pretty much immediately. It's, it's got quite a lot of low down torque, um, it holds gears well, it's also very quiet and that's, um, that's a definite surprise I think. I'm impressed with the, the control that they have over the combustion system. Plainly, the development of the combustion system by Mazda has, uh, has yielded something new. I think that for the, the man in the street, they wouldn't honestly know that it was any different to a gasoline engine vehicle. As far as the drivability is concerned, it's 
really, really very good. The 96 grams of CO2 per kilometre that's officially claimed for this is extremely good, I think, in this class of car with this performance. Fuel consumption, I did 43 miles per imperial gallon, that's about 6.6 .6 litres per 100 kilometres, which I would think as being very good for a, a gasoline car of this class. As we move into the future, we need novel engines. Engines will be around for a very long time yet. It's really quite interesting from the perspective of someone who's worked in the industry for a long time. We tried a very long time to do this and no one's ever really managed to do it. Certainly not in production. There were moments when I thought, no one's going to do this in a four-stroke engine, it's just too hard. Then it really is a very important moment.